Hey everyone, welcome back, and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem, find champion 2. This is a pretty reasonable problem, I think. The idea is we're given n teams. Each team is going to represent a node in this graph. They are going to be numbered from 0 to n minus 1, n is going to be given to us as a parameter. So pretty standard setup. We're also given a list of edges, and these edges are going to be directed because we are given it's guaranteed that this is going to be a directed acyclical graph. So there's never going to be a cycle in this graph, but the graph isn't necessarily connected. I think if we were given a connected uh, directed acyclical graph, then we could pretty much guarantee that this is going to be a tree. You know, it could be either a binary tree or a different kind of tree, but that's kind of the definition of a tree, if you uh, didn't know that. Based on that setup alone, there is guaranteed to be at least one node that doesn't have any incoming edges. And they basically ask us to find that node. And they, in the context of this problem, call that node the champion, but we don't really need to worry about any of that stuff. You just need to extract the information and how it relates to like a graph. But based on this problem, given that there could actually be multiple champions, multiple nodes that don't have any incoming edges. If that's the case, then we would return negative one. But if there was just a single node, so if we had an edge like going like that, then this would be the return value one. But since we have multiple, the return value is going to be negative one. It's guaranteed there's going to be at least one champion. There's never going to be zero. So if the number of champions is greater than one, then we would return negative one. So now the question is, how exactly do we find the node that doesn't have any incoming edges? Well, the easiest thing to do would just be to count the number of incoming edges for every single node. You could get them, you could build an adjacency list, but you actually don't even have to go that far. You don't have to build an adjacency list. You don't have to say that the neighbors of one are three and two. And actually, we're going to be doing the opposite of an adjacency list. So rather than getting the neighbors of one, which are three and two, we're getting the parents of the nodes. So we'd say zero doesn't have any parents. It doesn't have any incoming edges. Three has an incoming edge of just one. Two has two incoming edges from one and from zero. And zero also does not have any incoming edges. So we could have done a mapping, like for each of those uh, nodes, we could have mapped it to the list of incoming edges. That's what I'm getting at, but we don't even have to go that far. We just have to say that the number of incoming edges for zero was zero. For one, it was also zero. For two, it was two. There's two incoming edges. For three, there was one incoming edge. Once you have this mapping, you can filter out the ones that do have incoming edges, and then we're left with just these two. And since there are multiple of them, we are going to be returning negative one. If there's just a single one, we would return the value itself. So that's pretty much the idea of this problem. I could maybe do like a dry run, but I kind of just did that right now, just at a very, very high level. And I think the rest of the details will probably make more sense in the code. In terms of time complexity, we're going to be iterating over all of the nodes. And we're going to be iterating over all the edges. So you could say the time complexity is number of, of vertices plus the number of edges. For the space complexity, since we're not building the adjacency list and since we're only just counting the number of incoming edges for every node, the space complexity is going to be big O of V, the number of vertices. So let's code this up now. So what I'm going to do is first uh, get a mapping uh, counting the number of incoming edges. We could use a hash map for that, but given the uh, nodes are numbered very nicely from 0 to n minus 1, we can actually just use an array. So I'll initialize it uh, with all zeros, and it'll be of size n, so from 0 to n minus 1 indices. And then we're going to do that counting game. We're going to go through the edges. I'm going to unpack each edge. Each is directed, source to destination, just like that, to count the number of incoming edges. From the destination's perspective, we're going to increment by one. So for this destination, add one, because there's an incoming edge from the source. Now, after we're done with that, we want to filter only the champions. So I'm going to have an array 
for that like this. And then I'm going to go through everything in incoming and I'm going to use enumerate in Python because that's going to let me do this in enumerate. And by the way, if you don't know, like these Python tricks I'm doing, I cover everything super in depth in my Python for coding interviews course. It has a bunch of interactive lessons where you actually write code to learn concepts. So I'm going to enumerate this incoming. It's going to give me the uh, index and the parents, the list, or sorry, the count. Let's call it incoming count for every a node. The index, remember, refers to the node itself. So what I'm going to say here is if uh, not incoming count or if the incoming count was equal to zero, that's essentially what this is doing in Python, then I'm going to take I and append it to champions. So after all of this, we want to know if the length of champions is actually greater than one. It'll never be equal to zero. It might be equal to one or it'll be greater than one but it'll never be zero. In that case, we want to return negative one. Otherwise, we can just return the first value in champions. It's an array of size one. So this is perfectly sufficient. Let's go ahead and give this a run. And you can see here on the left, it works and it's pretty efficient. If you found this helpful, definitely check out neatcode.io. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.